Hello guys, so today we'll look into what is JWT validation. So the stuff that we'll look into is, we'll have a quick look at JWT, what it is, and then we'll see that what is RSS signature and validation, because this is what is used behind the scenes for JWT validation. And then we'll see that how, what is JWKS, because that's that we get public keys and all using JWKS. And then we'll look at the actual code uh, for validating the JWT. So a JWT consists of three parts. One is a header, a payload and a signature. So we'll just concentrate on signature right now because that is what is used for validating the JWT. So the way to create a signature. So at the bottom here, I have a pseudo code which shows that it's we calculate a RSA SHA. Basically we're calcul calculating a SHA uh, corresponding to a base URL encoded header and a base URL encoded payload and then when we are calculating a SHA we use a private key right so let's look into what is RSA and what is a private key because we need to understand that because everything is built on top of it so whenever we use encryption right or like whenever we use signatures uh, the most uh, common algorithm is RSA because it has asymmetric keys. So basically what happens is you generate RSA keys, which we'll also do in the exercise. When you generate the RSA keys, you get two keys. One is a private key and other is a public key. So the RSA keys, uh, which is a public and a private key pair, it has two use cases, two very common use cases. One is for encryption, like secure en encryption. So suppose you want to send a secure message uh, to someone else right so to other party or like to your friend so your friend would create a public and a private key and he'll share the public key with you right so because you are sending the message so you will encrypt the message using the public key right so remember your friend had public and a private key but you are encrypting the message using a public key so now when you send the message since your friend has the private key it is only your friend who has the private key nobody else so he could decrypt it right so now he could also share like public key not just with you he could share it with five or six different friends they all can send him secure and encrypted messages using the public key and it is only he who will be able to decode it because he has the private key right so this is how public and a private key is used for secure in encryption right so only one party is able to decrypt it whoever has the whoever has the private key and other parties can encrypt and send the data to the person whoever has the private key so the other use case which is used for jwt validation is for creating a signature using a private key right so earlier we were using a public key to encrypt it but here like a private key is used to create a signature so once you create a signature you will share the payload like or the actual text which you have used like the actual message so you send your message to your friend you say hey this is a message and this is a signature and this is the key so you share three things with them right you share what is the message Second is what is the signature and also the public key. Now your friend can verify whether the message came from you using the public key, right? So private key is used for creating a signature and the public key is used for verifying the signature. Now let's look at the JWT once again to see. So the signature is the last part, right? So a signature is created using a private key when you have the JWT, we'll see how we grab the public keys. But assuming that you have a public key, since you have this data, right, and you have the signature also, so you could verify the data and the signature, right, using the public key. So let's look at the code which creates a public and a private key, and then. Uh, we use we would create a signature and then verify it so here's the command which creates a private key so if you see here the private key is created 
right? I would have to convert the private key into a different format because that's what the JDK understands, Java understands because I'm using Java here. So I converted to PKCS8 format. And now, so, so there is a link between private and the public key. So we can always generate public key from the private key. So here I would execute the command to generate the public key also. So here now if you see it generates a public key. So this is the public and this is the private key. So you can always keep the private key with you right while generating a signature of the content and you can distribute the public key to anyone. So you give the content and the public key using the content signature and public key they can verify whether it's correct or not. So let's look at this code now. So the first thing we're doing is getting the signature, right? This is line number 31. And if we look getting the signature, what it does is it converts the content into bytes. And then we create a signature. To create a signature, we use a private key. So get private key. So here we are using private key dot D. This is the private key which we use. Right? So we then put data like the bytes within the signature and then we generate the signature out of it. And this is just converting it to a string. So, and next, this is like we create a signature of this content, right? And then we pass the signature to another method, which is whether we see whether the signature matches the content or not. So if we click here, we see that we get the content, we take the content, and then we use the public key here and then we use a signature dot verify and we say whether the signature so we add the data and we use the public key right and then we also use the signature to verify the signature matches or not right so we are using the verify here so the first case it should match because like both the contents are same so this content which we use for generating the signature and the content for verifying the signature is same. So it should match. So it should say signature matches is equal to true. So let's execute it. So we execute. So it prints the signature first. This is a signature. It says signature matches is equal to true. Now, even if we modify anything, like I would just put one here. So it should say that the signature does not match. Now. By the way, if you're liking the video so far, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button because it motivates me. So it says signature matches is equal to false, right? So this is how like anybody can get this access to content when they modify the content, right? And if you have the public key, you can always see that the content was modified or not using the public key. So we saw the code that how can we verify the contents using the public key, right? So in the JWT, we have the contents, which is header and payload, and then we have a signature, right? So we saw that we needed three things to make sure that the contents is correct. One was the contents itself. Second was the signature, which we have here. So we have contents and signature, but what is missing is the public key. So the way to get public key, it's a standard which no, normally most of the what providers follow so like i'm just taking an example for aws right now right azure ad so this is a url right here when we hit keys so we it so we get the keys various keys and then this is the certificate so these are the public keys corresponding to like uh, anything that microsoft encodes and all right so let's look let's try to grab a jwt and then we'll understand that how exactly this matches. So here I have a demo application, uh, which is running. So I will try to log into the demo application and then we'll try to grab the JWT and see that how exactly it is verified. So this is just logging using my ID. So I will just clear this and all so let's click on accept so here we get the tokens so and we get the id token here and if we try to decode the token
let's remove this part so here we could see that in the id token this is the header so header says that, this is, says that this is the algorithm that we were using and this is the key id right so if we find this key id we, we should see like a key corresponding to this key id so let's try to find it so you see this is the key id and from here we get to know like what is the public key that needs to be used so public key is here so it needs so we we come to know this is the public key that we need to use to validate this token right and again like the signature is here so let's try to look at the code for verifying of the signature now by the way if you're liking the video so far please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button because it motivates me a lot so i have copied the uh, signature and i've pasted like i have copied the token the id token i've pasted it here and this is the code that we use for validating the jwt so we create we use a jwk provider and this corresponds to like a url which we saw right we get the keys and this is a tenant id this is uh, corresponding to the tenant on which i use on microsoft right so so it tries to get the uh, all the keys from there right and then it tries to get the key from the jwt so it decodes the token so it tries to get the key right? and then it gets the specific jwk and then it use it gets the public key from there and here it uses the public key right and and then verifies the token so it verifies with this issuer and all and it prints whether the token was successful or not so let's try to execute it so we see like it runs correctly and the token was successful now if we try to modify anything here like maybe i'll try to modify it at the end which could be corresponding to so instead of this three i'll change it to two so nothing changes in the payload and all and if we try to decode decode should work fine but when we try to run the now it should complain that the signature is not valid and right, so here if we see that uh, it complains that uh, this signature is not correct right so it says that the token signature resulted invalid when verified but even if we try to copy it right and then we try to paste in the same site we should see the contents which are correct so let me do that so here i am putting the new token here i've pasted it so you see like only the signature changes which we change the like one of the last digits here right but the contents are still correct so this is how uh, the signature is verified if signature is changed or anything in the content is changed like the verification would fail so this is how like in OAuth it is made like we have id token which is available like which could be safely distributed to the client application and the client application can then verify whether the token was issued from the from the right place whether and the contents in all are valid or not so i hope this video was helpful to you so if you like my video please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel because it motivates me a lot